everything related to Bitcoin is about the having. It's like our last hope, like in Star Wars. You're you're my only hope, Obi Wan. So, um, although it's interesting, I guess today there's me announcement of an approval for the ETH futures ETF. Mm-hmm. You can talk about that, um, and then and they punted on all of the Bitcoin uh, spot ETFs. So, yeah, interesting stuff. But let's go macro, and then we'll we'll eventually wind our way back to to crypto. Martinez identified the $43,200 area as a crucial support level, which can potentially determine the fate of Bitcoin's price. The premier cryptocurrency broke above this price zone on Wednesday, December 20, and has been trading mostly sideways since. In his post, Martinez highlighted that so long as the vital $43,200 support holds, the momentum is with the Bitcoin bulls. According to the crypto analysts, staying above this support is one catalyst that could push the Bitcoin price to above $47,360. On the flip side of his analysis, he noted that the Bitcoin price could possibly undergo a correction. The crypto pundit emphasized that one of the bearish signals to watch out for is a sustained close below the crucial $43,200 mark. According to Martinez's projection, a close below $43,200 could send the price of BTC down towards $37,000. This would mean a decline of over 15% from the current price point. Oil rising, again, is, is rising for all the wrong reasons, right? Mm-hmm. It's rising for uh, political means in the sense that uh, there's not rising demand. I mean, demand has recovered nicely. It, it, it has, but it's not accelerating. And what you've got is Saudi saying, we really don't care anymore about this deal that we struck with y'all. Uh, there, there's a good you plural, the, the Southern version, the y'all. So I, I can cross, yeah. you know, Northern and Southern um, <laughs> since I live in Chapel Hill, 25 years. Can you believe that? I've lived down here 25 years. Um, oil, I think is is going to hit triple digits. I, I think the Saudis are intent on floating some more of, of Aramco and they want to maximize the money in their pocket. And they do have full control at this point because there's not enough demand to suck up their um, supply changes. So, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be an interesting challenge. and. Uh, I, let, me, let me restate that. It's the other way. The demand is solid, right? We're not in a recession. We're not, we're not having falling uh, demand. And therefore, when they cut, which is what they said they were going to do unilaterally, uh, then prices are going to rise. And, and then you got the bots and, and all that that come in. And, and the futures market, which will, again, we will talk about futures market later. Futures market allows manipulation of price. And that has happened in the oil market for decades, gold market for decades. So same kind of kind of thing happening. I'm going to take the under uh, on okay. the I word in that what we're seeing is simple manipulation of oil prices to maximize revenues to the Saudis. I mean, that, that's all that is. And that, that's what's being reflected in quote unquote CPI. And, and yeah, that's bad for the incumbents in government. Um, Super bad for the president, right? I mean, there's a perfect X. I mean, a perfect inverse correlation between gas prices at the pump and presidential popularity. I mean, it's absolutely flawless connection. Uh, anything over $2, your popularity starts to go down. Over $3, you're in trouble. And four bucks, forget about it. I mean, it's ugly. So if you can get below a dollar, I mean, you get elected no matter what you do. It's like the old Trump line, shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and get away with it. Well, yeah, if if gas prices are below a dollar, you can do whatever you want. Um, So I'm, I, I, you know how I feel about this. I don't, I don't think we have inflation. Now, the one, the one thing that, that I have to, you know, correct myself on, I guess, um, it's almost like talking to a third person. It's ridiculous, but is back to cross border liquidity is actually contracting. Contracting. M2 went down for the first time in 90 plus years. I mean, actually contracted. So that is not something we've lived with 
in the past century, obviously. And uh, I th- and so my whole point on it's just currency devaluation, stupid. It's not inflation. Not you, stupid, but you know, the world's stupid. Um, I, I still believe that, right? I still believe what we're seeing is is the leftover effects from the idiotic, you know, modern monetary theory pump of money supply post lockdowns, and I think. I think that that that's what the oil dynamic is. Everything else that that you see starting to to go down. I mean, shipping rates and you know commodity prices are not are not they're not rising the way people thought they would. And that that ratio of financial assets to real assets is stubbornly stuck down at the trough. You know, we've been, everyone's been predicting for two years this this great rally in in commodities over financial assets and it, it really hasn't hasn't happened. Uh, and I think it's because the growth is moribund, right? We're we're growing two-ish percent if we're lucky. And that is stall speed, right? That's not fast economic growth. Investment manager Valkyrie Funds LLC has begun adding Ether futures to its existing Bitcoin futures exchange traded fund after getting the green light from the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, the company said on Thursday. The renamed Valkyrie Bitcoin and Ether Strategy ETF will launch on Monday, Valkyrie's chief investment officer Stephen McClurg told Reuters. It would be the first time futures based on Ether contracts would be available to investors via an exchange traded fund in a boost for the crypto market. Mark Yusko now shares his views and expectations regarding this. I texted to to Pomp and Jason this morning, naked ETH shorts incoming. I mean, when you can go short an asset without having to own the asset, what what doesn't matter what it is, whether it's oil, whether it's gold, whether it's molybdenum, whether it's Bitcoin or now ETH, that's a bad thing because Naked shorting is not allowed in traditional spot markets. And spot is, is not exactly the right term, but in the stock market, you're not allowed to naked short. Right? You actually have to have the stock in order to short it. And same thing with a barrel of oil. In the olden days, if I wanted to trade you a barrel of oil, I had to have a barrel of oil. I couldn't just make up a little piece of paper that said, oh, yeah. If I happen to have a barrel of oil on this date, I will get it to you. It's actually kind of BS. And and I get it that financialization has some positives, but paper futures markets have a long history of enabling manipulation and uh, they make a lot of money for the people producing the paper and destroy a lot of people on, on the other side. So maybe maybe I'm not as big a fan of, of futures markets as, as other people, but what what is going to happen is large institutions now can short Ethereum the same way they shorted Bitcoin, November 21, right? Almost to the day, almost to the day of the peak, they approved the Bitcoin futures ETF and it got a billion dollars overnight. And everybody's like, oh, that's so great. I'm like, well, think about it. For every buyer, there's a seller. And guess what? There can even be more bigger sellers on the other side pushing that incremental trade the wrong direction. And, and once that cascade starts because of high frequency and because of the machines, those machines will just start chopping the, the 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 bids and I, I it's just history says it's not a good thing for short term price history says it's not a good thing for free and open markets uh, because it allows people with large balance sheets to manipulate and I use the term manipulate intentionally because They've paid massive fines. They, meaning these large institutions, have paid massive fines, like hundreds of billions of dollars without admitting guilt. I always loved that part. How the hell do you pay 
a billion dollar fine, but you get to say, but I'm, but I'm not guilty. Just the, must- the fact that you paid a billion dollars says that you're guilty, right? I mean, otherwise you, you wouldn't pay. And so that's just, it, it's kind of like lobbying. If a firm, and I, and I, I can name names because they, they did this, JP Morgan, if, if they manipulate the price of gold, Right? They spoof the price of gold and they make $20 billion of profit. Right? That's all public information. That's wrong. Right? That's illegal. But then they pay a billion and they're okay. I, I don't think that's okay. And so the same thing is going to happen here. Not necessarily them, but it could be them. But somebody or some buddies are going to come into the ETH market now. And they're going to get very short this asset because they have to take the other side of everybody who piles in long. And I just don't, I don't like it personally.